Welcome to Words to Grow Right with Reverend Jimmy Hicks Jr. It says, and we know. Y'all know we've been in Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And as we said before, the good that comes from loving God and being the called according to his purpose is not always for you. We use that good to be compassionate to others. So when it comes to us, we use the good that comes to us to go through us to be compassionate to others. Now, we, we've been we used the last couple of weeks to talk about that. We talked about um, compassion is sympathy for, for the suffering of others, often including a desire to help. Now, understand something, because we're gonna, let's look at that. It, uh, uh, compassion is sympathy for the suffering of others. Some people want your compassion, but they're not suffering. Or y'all just take that, tuck that away, and pull that out when you, you know. Some people want your compassion, but they're not suffering. Amen. All right, all right, praise the Lord. That, that. Compassion should come because you love your neighbor as yourself. And so your compassion is, 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 is a part of you. It's a part of that Holy Spirit. So today, but what we want to show is that compassion is the good that allows you an avenue to give the good news of Jesus Christ. You don't just have the compassion to just, just be a giver. Compassion is the good that allows us an avenue to give the good news of Jesus Christ. There's a reason for the compassion. There's a reason why God put that love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, gentleness, faith in you because it's got to come off of you so somebody else can eat it, but, but while they're eating their fruit, then you got, you know, they're eating your fruit off that comes off you, that gives you the avenue to now talk about the good news. You know, it's like, you don't mind me talking while you eat. Oh, praise the Lord. Some of y'all will get that. Compassion is the good that allows us the avenue to give the good news of Jesus Christ. But what we will learn today that we cannot allow our compassion to be manipulated. There are people that we serve out of compassion, uh, uh, but we got to make sure that they don't make us their servants. Amen? Amen. I mean, there's, there, 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 you know, because of the Holy Ghost in you, the compassion is coming off of you. But, but we got to be careful, you know, just because I'm, I serve you, I'm not your servant. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We are compassionate, but we are not foolish. Non-Christians, y'all ever, ever, ever notice this? Non-Christians will try to tell us, Christians, what we should be doing as a Christian. You know, as a Christian, you should be. How you know you ain't even saved? Because they want to try to manipulate what they know that's in you. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, but see, they, they know it's in you, but they can't feel it in you. They, can't, they don't know what it feels like. They don't know. They, see, they can't understand that, so they're going to try to tell you. But you say, oh, no, 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 because you only know about a little bit. I know. I, I, I got the Holy Spirit in me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And so we receive compassion through the fruit of the Spirit to accomplish our assignment from God. When, when compassion comes you know, you got to understand something. As I said before, when compassion comes off of you, it is now an avenue. That's another t-shirt. It comes off of you, it's now an avenue now to bring in the good news. Hallelujah. They think they manipulate you, but you're like, oh, why are you enjoying my compassion? Let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you about why I'm doing this. Because, because absent of Jesus, my answer to you would be no. Not a, not a thing. Not another thing. Not a, I don't have no more money to give. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The act of compassion cannot be disconnected from our assignment. But also our assignment cannot be disconnected from our compassion. See, 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 people will try to uh, uh, put you where they want you to be. 
They will, they will say, um, you can help people, but you can't mention Jesus. What? I, that, the only reason I want to help them is because of Jesus. And I want them to know it's the Jesus in me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. They will say you can help people. Hallelujah. They, they can say you can pray for compassion. You can even pray for compassion. You can even pray that people be compassion. But you can't mention Jesus. So I, I, I want to look at some scriptures as we, because I mean, we built this up. We talked about, uh, we, we, we talked about compassion the last couple weeks. We talked about Jesus feeding the 5,000. We talked about uh, 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 what the compassion should look like last week. But I want you to see some things. I want you to see in John 14, I mean 6, 14 and 15, uh, uh, after Jesus fed the 5,000. Now this is John's account. We read Matthew's account. But, but now we're reading John's account and it says, when the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, surely he is the prophet we have been expecting. Bible says when Jesus saw that they were ready to force him to be their king, he slipped away into the hills by himself. We, we, we cannot let anyone take us away from why we do the good that we do. You understand why you do it, but you, you can't allow people to take you away from the good that we do. See, Jesus recognizes their intentions. He recognizes their intentions and he's like, you want me to be something I was not called to be. I was not called, come, Jesus is like, I didn't come down here to be your physical king, to lead you in a physical war against these Romans. And so you're trying to force me to be, that's not what I came to be. And, 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 and so because we have provided, we have to understand, it does not make us someone's provider. But they will try to put you in the position of provider because every time they want some R&D, they come to you. I'm not your provider. I showed you compassion, but I'm not your provider. And see that, see that see, again, compassion, you know, gives us an avenue to talk about the good news. It's not the end all the be all. And so, you know, and, and, and see, the, the, the thing is, if we don't use the avenue, well, look, look, we cannot allow people to make us their savior. What are you talking about, Pastor? Because you were not called to be the savior of your family. You were not called, you know, that if something is wrong, uh, you know, it, 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 all the prayers got to go through you. Oh, I need to pray through. Let me call. Let me call Big Mama. Let me call this one. Let me, I need to pray through. No, you weren't called for all the prayers to come to you. Jesus died, so the the, the veil was ripped. We don't, you weren't called to be the priest of your family. We don't need the priest anymore. You were called to, to, to give the great commission. You were called to be a witness. You were called to teach the good news. You weren't called to, 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 to you know, to be the, the, the you know, the most, I'm, I'm the holiest one around. You know, people, oh, I, you're the only one to get a prayer through. That's a lie. And if someone is, is, is portraying the person that can only get a prayer through, they're failing the Lord. See, because if, 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 if you've been around somebody 5, 10, 15 years and you're still looking at them as the only one to get a prayer through, they have failed you because, because they should be telling you why they can get a prayer through. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So even though we show compassion, we still have to direct those same people to God through Jesus Christ. Passion is not the end, it is the beginning. It is the hook for the fishes of men. It's one of the hooks. You show people compassion, and they hear the you and hook them, reel them in, reel them in. But see, if they know they can come to you and 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 and, and you don't and, and, and get away, you know, it's like, hey, well, you want, you know, you want twenty dollars? You need to sit down. Let me talk to you about the Lord. But they want, they don't want one twenty dollars. They don't want. Well, I need. I, let's go. Okay, let me, I got some scriptures I need to tell you about. See, the thing is, that's the hook. Real a man. Oh, you need something for me? Okay, let me tell you about the Lord. Let me, oh, man, I, I don't care. I don't care. You know what? You came to me. I know my assignment. Oh, praise the Lord. 
John Shortland's 32 says, Jesus says, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. See, the thing is, your compassion, although it's, it's working through you through Jesus, that's not what's drawing them to Jesus. That's giving your avenue to talk about Jesus. Your compassion is not going to compel them to be saved. But your compassion allows you now the opportunity to talk to them about the Lord. And you've got to be just as serious about it just as they're serious about that $20. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are drawn to Jesus in order to have a personal relationship with God, not to rely on the one using the blessings of God. Hallelujah. We need to have a personal relationship, not rely on the person. We need to have a personal relationship, not just trust in that person. Oh, I know, I come to Rich. Rich got it. Rich will help me. Rich a Christian. Rich. Yeah, let me tell you why I'm doing it. Right? I want you to look at these scriptures. Because at these, at, you know, as I said before, Jesus, you know, he perceived what they wanted to do. They wanted to make him be something that he wasn't. And so he slipped away. But then when he saw him again in verse 24, uh, the Bible says, so when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats, went across to Capernaum to look for him. They found him on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, where did you get here? See, Jesus didn't even deal with that. You know, that's when he walked on water and all that and walked across. But he didn't even deal, he didn't deal with that with them. He said, Jesus, well, I tell you the truth. Y'all know, y'all know them ears should be perking up when Jesus says, I tell you the truth. He said, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you. Not because you understood the miraculous signs. But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For, for, for God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. Now understand this, when I'm looking at this, this is what I see. You might see something else. But I see that, 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 that you need to know the real reason that you're coming to God, that you're coming to Jesus. Because Jesus already do. They didn't, they didn't tell him. So the thing is, he knows why you're here. He knows your arterial motives. Even if you don't share them with anybody else, Jesus knows. I'm here to be closer to this person. I'm here to sing in the choir. I'm here to be seen. I'm here to... Whatever your reason, if it's not God, if it's not eternal life, if it's not to learn more, oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Compassion is not something to waste energy seeking after. Remember he said, look, don't, don't, don't be so concerned about the perishable things like food. If someone needs to be compassionate about you like Jesus was about the food, you don't have to spend energy about that. People have been empowered to be compassionate. You don't, have to be, you don't have to spend energy trying to find a compassionate Christian. You just have to be, you have to spend time being around real Christians. Seeking the Lord. If you seek the Lord, you're going to find some, some Christians. And if you, go, if you need anything, that, their compassion is going to come on you. Well, thank you, Jesus. Don't seek compassion it comes when you're in need look at John 6 28 they replied you know this is them they replied we want to perform God's works too what should we do and if I can't tell anybody else if you can't get anything else from this you're not in this to perform miracles that's what the word, the church is, I mean the world is like, well let me see, what, the church ain't doing this and the church ain't doing this anymore. And the church, that, that was, that, that's because that was never the assignment of the church. Here's these people right here coming to Jesus saying, we want to perform God's works too, what should we do? See, what Jesus did as we read before, he did it because compassion came on him. And some people want to do it to get an offering. You know, I'm going to you gonna give me when I come. I'm going you know, to raise this offering. Everybody, come on, $25,000, for that five to cents. Everybody, come on. You're you know, your blessing to be there when you get back. No, 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 no. Compassion comes out of you through the Holy Spirit because there is, because you sense need in the building and, and there is no price tag to it. 
But these people want it like, hey, just give us the power. Well, what are the people in need? Ah, we, they want, we, we don't have no people in need right now. We just need the power. They said, we want to perform, God, perform. Y'all catch that word? We want to perform God's works too. That's what they think they see in a performance. What should we do? People, people want everything except what God wants for them. Look what Jesus says. I don't know if anybody ever told me this. This is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. That's it. That's it. Jesus tells them that all God wants from us is for us to believe in his son. So, we, so, so, so as, as we look at the rest of these scriptures, we're going from the assumption that everything else he says has to be concerned with this statement that, 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 that what Jesus says. That all God wants from you is for you to believe in the one he sent. So Jesus is going to tell them how they need to show that they believe in the one God sent. Look at verse 30. They answer, show us, some, show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you. Right, what can you do? Come on, can you sing? Can you dance? Come on, can you skip? I want to see spin around. Right, run around, run around in a circle. Go on, run around. Uh, uh, go on, turn around three times. Come on, show me what you can do. This is what they're telling Jesus. You want us to believe in and you show us what you can do. See, compassion is not done because you want it. It's done because you need it. You don't get me to just perform. I don't just, I don't serve you. Pastor, come do this. Pastor, come do that. Come on. You got just as much connection based, well, it, based upon the way you're living, you should have just as much a connection with God as I have. I'm perform. Come bless my house, bless my car, bless it yourself. Bless it. You bless your house and your car based upon how you live in your house and what you do with your car. You use that car to cut people off and, 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 and you know, you know, get in road rage, it ain't going to be blessed. I can dump a bottle of oil on it and it still ain't going to be blessed. You live in any old kind of way in your house, I don't care how many of your, you know, your arches and your doorways are blessed. It's, that's not going to bless you. So oh, thank you, Jesus. John, what's that? John 6, 31, 34. And I hear they're telling Jesus, look, hey, after all, all I, I, our ancestors ate manna while they journeyed through the wilderness. The scripture says Moses gave them bread from heaven. And, and, and how dare you bring up, this is me talking now, how dare you bring up your ancestors that complained 24 7 to Moses about the man. Now you're using that as, a, as an example to Jesus. Though your ancestors were talking about is that all we're going to ever get is man? I can't sick of man. But now they're using that to Jesus, talking about, you know, you need to give us like Moses gave us. Here goes Jesus again. I tell you the truth. Moses didn't give you bread, give you bread from heaven. My father did. Man, let's get the story straight. See, see, he said, he said, and now my father, same one that, that, that allowed Moses, you know, that gave you the bread through Moses, he offers you the true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said, sir, give us this bread every day. So you, you, you what was Jesus saying? First, you got to get your focus off of man. Moses didn't do it. God did. And Moses didn't do anything to, to take God's glory. Stop letting people take God's glory. Praise the Lord. They never experienced the manna. They want 
They, they want what they heard about, not what they experienced. And that's some of us. We just, you know, you want, you, you want what somebody else said they can have through the Lord, but you don't want to get, have the ex experience they had. You don't want to go through what they had. You just want what they have. You don't want to do what you need to get what they have. And, and, and it's been going on since they've been trying, like since all the way back. They're not trying to envision the day when they will come out of lack or come out of one. I had a pastor friend of mine told me that, that he was praying for a, a young lady. He's like, I'm praying for you to come off welfare. I'm praying for you. She, she was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I ain't, I ain't asked for that. I ain't asked for that. She didn't receive that prayer. Because that was her legacy. That's what, her, that's what was passed to her. Her mama passed that to her. Her grandmama passed that to her. They told her how to do it, how to, how to, how to work that system. And there's some people that will, 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 will get their kids uh, uh, labeled uh, uh, mentally so they can, so it's like, I'm going to get them a check too. Their sons, I'm going to label them that. So I can give him a check for the rest of his life. Well, I ain't talking about what I, what I, I'm telling you what I know. Not envisioning a day when, when you can come out through the power of God. They wanted compassion guaranteed for the future. Look at John 6, 35. Jesus replied, look, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Praise the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never hunger again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Now look at this. That right there is physical. That right there uh, is in line with, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. So you got to catch these. These goes from the physical to the spiritual, and you got to catch them. He says, he says, who, 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 you know, who, whoever comes to me, because he's like, I know y'all talking about being fed. I know y'all talking about eating bread. I want you to know, uh, uh, whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then he says, but you haven't believed in me though, though you have seen me. You know, why are you telling me to, you know, do parlor tricks for you? You didn't already see me feed the 5,000. That's why you want me to, to give you bread right now. You already see me. Why do you want me to do something else? And we got to ask God. Yeah, we got to ask ourselves the same thing. God has already, you, you have already blessed us. And yet we're going, God, now if you do this, I will serve you with all my heart. What about what he already did? You should already be served. The fact that you woke up this morning, hallelujah, and got out of bed and had the activity of your limb, you, you should be, Lord, I want to serve you all my life. Just for that. But he gives us a promise about future provision. And he says, you can only have it if you believe. And there are people that say, well, I believe. You believe, I believe. But see, he's like, uh, 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 uh. See, because your belief has to be connected to your actions. And so you can say you believe. See, the thing is, is that there's so many people that just say, well, I believe. Look what Jesus says. And, and. It took me, I'm telling you, and I thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit. Because when I got the understanding of this, I was like, wow. Look at John 37. He said, however, Jesus says, however, those the Father has given me will come to me, and I will never reject them. For I have come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me, uh, uh, not to do my own will. And, and, and this is the will of God, that I should not lose even one of all those he has given me, but that I should raise them up at the, at the last day. 
For it is my Father's will that all who see his Son and believe in him should have eternal life. I will raise them up at the last day. And I started, I was like, now who is the ones that God has, has given him? And who are the ones that were not given to him? It's like, man, anybody ever thought that? I mean, I, who did God give to Jesus? Because we want to be like, hey, am I one of the ones that God gave to Jesus or I'm not? I don't pray the Lord. There are those who come to God for what they want. There are others who have come for what God is offering. And what God is offering is not what you want. It should be, but what God is offering is eternal life. That's what God is offering. God is offering eternal life, and, and we're like, well, what about, what about, I want man down here. Well, I'm, I want to get... And Jesus already said that, but if you believe in him, that's taken care of. So if the fact that you're in want means that you're living a life that, that, that says you don't believe in Jesus. Because if you believe in Jesus, he said, I'm going to take care of you. It's just like it says, I said before you life and death, blessings and curses, and I wish that you would choose life. Because if you choose life, you receive the blessings. You don't have to work for the blessings, you receive the blessings. And so if you're down here in want, it's because you, don't, you, you really don't believe in Jesus. <laughs> Here's the perfect part. Then the people began to murmur in disagreement. I'm, 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 I'm going to get back to that piece about who God sent. Listen, let me get a couple more scriptures here. Then the people began to murmur in disagreement because he had said, I'm the bread that came down from heaven. They said, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph? We know his father and his mother. How can he say, I've come down from heaven? Understand something, belief in Jesus and understanding everything he says and does uh -uh, does not always go together. Belief in Jesus and understanding the word, that doesn't always happen. You don't have to, you don't have to understand why he said it. You just got to understand, you need to do it. Un understanding, you know, with all you're getting, get understanding. Understanding may not come right away, but it still doesn't preclude you from having to do it. Y'all know I always use this one. You may not understand why you have to love your enemy, but you still have to do it. You don't, you don't say, well, I don't, I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to love my enemy until I understand why Jesus said it. Well, the minute you don't, then you're in the midst of sin because you're being disobedient to the word of God. You don't, you don't get to say, you know, you don't, you don't get to say why. It's like you ain't get to say why when you was a kid. You'd like to get backhanded. Why? <laughs> You'd be thankful if all you got was because I said so. <laughs> That's a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. All I got was because I said so. No matter what, whether you understand it or not, you still have to believe. You still have to do it. Look at John 6 and 43 to 48. But Jesus replied, stop complaining about what I said. It sounds sound like he got a bunch of little kids with him, don't he? he said, stop complaining about what I said. For no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. And at the last day, I will raise them up. Now, he just said that three, day, three times. At the last day, I will raise them up. That's his focus. That the last day I want to raise you up, the last day I want you to be in, you know, have eternal life. You know, you, you, you getting caught up in too much of this other stuff down here. 
He said, as it is written in the scriptures, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has ever seen the Father, only I who was sent from God have seen him. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. Look at Jesus. Jesus is, is, is he's trying to let them know. I'm the bread of life. I'm the bread you should be seeking. Not the bread that's going to be gone. Not the bread that's going to go through you and, and out of you. But the bread of, that, that will give you eternal life. And he continues to talk to himself as bread because he, it, it's, it's, it's all about consumption. It's all about taking him in. It's all about, you know, eating it all. I don't know about the kids today. The kids today, they have it easy, you know. You know, their parents have cut the crust off the bread. Like, what in the world is this? <laughs> what is this? They, will, they, got, they got a little machine, I mean a little thing. You push it down the middle of the bread and it cuts off all of the ends. I had to sit at the table until all the ends was eaten. Same thing was in the ends, was in the bread. And then what that's what the lady told Jesus, same thing in the cross is in the bread. You don't get to waste the ends. You're supposed to eat it all. That's what Jesus is saying. Look, 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 I, I am the bread of life. And you see, back then they didn't have these, but you got to eat it all. Ain't nobody cutting off the end. You cut off the end, you might miss something yet you need. Woo you don't cut, you eat it all, eat the whole roll. Now this is what I'm talking about. When, G, when, 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 when Jesus is talking about the people that are sent to him by the Father, right? Remember that God's vision is expressed through word. God said, let there be. The word was sent, I mean, to, his vision was sent to the word, and the word made it real. People are sent to Jesus from God through the parameters of the word. And so everybody can be sent to God if they respond to the parameters of the word. So it's not saying Mrs. Mary is sent, sent to God, but Mother, uh, Mother, Mother Hicks is not, uh, Brother Cornell is sent to God, but, but Pastor Brown is not. No, it's not saying that. It's not saying that there's some lottery out there. Everybody is, 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 is that, that God sends to Jesus is sent to Jesus through the parameters of the word. I, I'm going to show you something. Look at John 3.16. We know that, right? But this is how God loved the world, the whole world. He gave, his, he gave his one and only son that everyone has to meet the parameters. Everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life or eternal life. Those are your parameters. If you don't believe in him, you don't meet the parameters. God said belief in him Gives you eternal life. Gives you everlasting life. Jesus said, you, you got to believe it. Jesus has not said anything different. He said, God set the parameters. If you believe in me, you have eternal life. And so we get the, we get the parameters from God's word as to how we get to Jesus and we get to him in, through belief in him. And so Jesus then tells us what the belief looks like because belief in Jesus is set in stone. Belief in Jesus is the key. You can't, you can't come to Jesus any old kind of way. You see, there, there, there are those who come to Jesus outside the parameters of the word. And, 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 and if you come to Jesus outside of the parameters of the word of God, then, then, then you're not coming from God. See, there's, so, there's some people to be like, you know, well, that just doesn't apply in 2021. Oh, you outside the parameters. You can't, you, can't, you can't change what the Word of God says. Well, that, you know, homo, it doesn't, uh, what they're talking about homosexuality, that doesn't apply anymore because, because God is love and everybody's love. And if you love and then we love, and that, 
You're outside the parameters. You can't change the word of God. Well, when God says, when God talks about, uh, I mean, he hates the hands that shed innocent blood. I mean, and, and, and you know, and, and, and God said, he's not talking about abortion. Now. I mean, there, there, there are too many kids. Some of these kids don't belong here. There was a first lady that, that I was connected that said that. Too many kids, I mean, some of them don't need to be here. What? The pastor's wife. Advocating abortion. She stepped outside the parameters. You step outside the parameters, you, are not, you have not been sent by God to Jesus. And the ones who step outside the parameters are the ones who complain about the word of God. They're the ones that complain. Well, they can't mean this. Man, I ain't doing that. I ain't there yet. See, you understand, when people say, I'm not there yet, what they're saying is, I'm not obeying that word. Oh, praise the Lord. Because we've heard them say it. Or we've said it. Look at John, look at, look at John 6, 49. Your ancestors ate manna, and this is Jesus talking to them. Your ancestors ate uh, uh, manna in the wilderness, but they all died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread which I offer so the world may live is my flesh. Now understand something. Jesus is now telling you how to show that you believe. He's never, he's not, he hasn't gone off to something totally different. He's been telling them all along that you have to believe in me. All you need to do is believe in me. All God wants you to do is to believe in me. All God wants you to do is believe in his son that's been sent from heaven. That's what he's saying. And now he's telling you how you show that you believe. And he says, anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And he says, this bread that I'm talking about, in case you think I'm still talking about uh, 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 regular bread, I'm not talking about regular bread anymore. I'm talking about bread, which is my flesh. And see, it blew people's mind because now all of a sudden they went cannibalism. But he's talking about example. In order for you to believe in me, this is Jesus saying, you have to eat my flesh, which means you have to consume my example. Consume my example. The Bible says then the people begin arguing with each other about what he meant. How can this man give us his flesh to eat, they said. So Jesus again, he said again, I tell you the truth. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. Now they're about to lose their mind. But anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise that person from the last day. How many times has Jesus said that now? His goal is to raise you at the last day. Not, 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 not so you can have, you know, you know, car, house, money in your pocket. All that's going to pass away. We are not to be concerned with that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. Your concern is, will I be raised on the last day? And the last day, the women, women been in Revelation, so, so the, the last day could be your last day on earth or, the, or, the, or when Jesus decides to punish the, the earth. Raises on that last day. Oh, thank you, Jesus. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. As we get ready, as we're going to be getting ready for communion. 
We drink it, we eat this flesh, total consumption of who he is, total consumption of how he acted, total consumption of the, the, the compassion and the mercy and the love that he had for his fellow man. And, 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 and the blood is, 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 is taking in um, what his blood meant as it streamed from his body, which was the, for, the, for the remission uh, or forgiveness of our sins. You've got to drink that. And when you take it in, it means that, 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 that I understand the pain and I understand what it meant for his blood to come out of his body. And, 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 and oh, thank you, Jesus. Then not only do I want forgiveness of sin, I want to repent and, 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 uh, and turn from my wicked ways. There's people that just want the forgiveness, but they want to they wanna still sin. And I'm talking about Christians. They want to hang on to that all week, you know, well, ain't nobody perfect, and you know, uh, you know, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I, Jesus ain't died for that. He died so that we could be free from sin. I think we could be still in bondage to sin. And if you're sitting on a continuous, consistent basis, Mother Smart, I didn't understand what she said, talked about what she been, hey, baby, but uh, Christians don't practice sin. Practice. I'm like, what? what is she talking about? I didn't know what she was talking about. But yeah, if you, if you do it today and do it tomorrow, you're, you're practicing it until you get it right. You keep doing it. This is it, Christian. We don't, we don't. Saint, no, she said saints don't practice sin, and that's what she said. Saints don't practice sin. We don't, we don't continuous, we don't sin on a continuous basis. Eternal life is connected to total consumption of the body and blood of Jesus. Total consumption. Not, I'm not you, you know, we got too many nibbling saints. We're nibbling. You nibble a little here, you nibble a little. No, it's total consumption. He said, eat my flesh and drink my, and drink my blood. He said, total consumption. Look at this, look at this. He said, he said, I live because of the living Father who sent me. In the same way, anyone who feeds on me will live because of me. We have no life because of Jesus. Why? Because we, we, we're, we're totally we're consuming his word. We're consuming his example. We're consumed, and that's why we have new life. If you are not consuming Jesus, you still have old life. Because it's only Jesus that can give you new life. And so if you're not consuming him, then you're still partaking of a table you should have turned from a long time ago. Come on, Jesus, Jesus, come on, I'm right. Jesus is repetitive and, and for good reason. Look at him again. I am the true bread that comes down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will not die as your ancestors did, even though they ate manna, but will live forever, he said. These th he, and he said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue. Drop down, drop down. 660. Many of the disciples said this is very hard to understand. How many of us... How many of us saying the same things? This is very hard to understand. I don't get this. You better make sure you don't do what these did. He said, how can anyone accept? This is very hard to understand. How can anyone accept it? Jesus was aware that his disciples were complaining. So he said this. Does this offend you? Does this offend you? Again, because we got too many people in the church you offended. For, oh, you offended. He dropped that. I'm offended. The littlest thing, you offended. That's the word of God. Does this, he, said, he said, if this offends you, then what you gonna think when you see the Son of Man ascend to heaven again? The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. What's he trying to say? You gotta live through the Spirit. If you don't understand it, then you need to pray to the Spirit. You need to ask God for understanding. You need to ask God for wisdom. You don't sit there with your lip poked out talking about, I don't, I don't understand. 
Do what you need to understand. Is it the word of God? First then find out what, what is pastor saying, is that the word of God? You find it in the word of God, now it's scripture. You still don't understand? Now you need to pray. Because the fact that, you, again, the fact that you don't understand it does not preclude you from doing it. He said, the ve and the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But some of you do not believe me. Here again, for Jesus knew from the beginning which one didn't believe and knew who would betray him. How could Jesus know? Because if there are people that are, are following him trying to get his word, they believe in him. If there are people in him trying to get the food, they don't believe in him. They're just trying to get the food. How many people are trying? You're just here to get something that's not the word. He know, he know who's there, to, and, he, and again, he knew. He knows what, the, what their intentions are. We talked about that at the very beginning of the, of the chapter. And so, you have to know what your intentions are. Because if you're here to get the word, the fact that you don't understand the word shouldn't stop you from staying on that word until you get it. But so many of us are let lack of understanding just make us give up, cave in, and quit. You hear about any other reason uh, 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 other than you choose life by choosing Jesus and believing in Jesus, the Father did not give you to Jesus. I'll say that again. If you're here for any other reason other than you chose life by choosing and believing in Jesus, the Father did not give you to Jesus. He gave you to the church. You wanted them good members. But that's all you are. You'll miss church, but show up Monday to clean the kitchen. You're a good member. But you, 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 you're missing the whole point. <laughs> Where am I? I'm at, I'm at, okay, I'm moving. John 6, 66. If y'all didn't give anybody, I, I, was, I was doing this, and I called my wife, and she was like, leave me alone. No. <laughs> I called my wife and said, you got to see this, you got to see this. She said, what? I said, it's going to blow your mind. It just blew mine. She said, oh, I'm doing the announcements. I said, come on. So she came in and I was like, look, it's John 6, 66. And the word of God said on John 6, 66, at this point, many of the disciples turned away and deserted him. They got taken over by the devil. Did you see that? They got taken over and they just deserted Jesus because they couldn't understand the word he was saying. They could have said, well, Jesus, can you say that again? Well, Jesus, can you just say that one more time? I mean, can you say it another way? Come on, because I can't get it. Jesus, are you really talking about eating your... Physical flesh. I mean, that could have just asked questions. But they, this, they, turn, they, this, they turned away and they deserted him. He just fed 5,000. Five loaves of bread with two fish, five loaves of bread, right? Or I might have it back. I don't know. But he, they just saw it. They're following him because they know he can do it. But because he just said something that they don't, don't understand, they stop following him. Because he wouldn't do no more tricks. Because the word was too much for him to understand. Jesus, do a trick for me. Jesus, pull a rabbit out of hat. He said, no, you need to eat my flesh and drink my blood. That's what you need to do. You need to believe in me. Look at the word of God. The Bible says, then Jesus turned to the 12 and asked, are you going to leave? He's like, are y'all you, are you, are gonna leave me too? I don't know about y'all, but that, it messes me up, so I know it messed Jesus up. But all you can do, you can't do anything with, with people that want to leave. By 
Bible says, Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom will we go? You have the words that give eternal life. I mean, if, if, if the word of God gets too hard for you here, where are you going? Where are you going? All we're giving you is the word. Where are you going to go? And, and, and still get eternal life. Simon said, we believe and we know you are the Holy One of God. Then Jesus said, I chose the 12 of you. I, I chose the 12 of you. I didn't wait for God to send y'all to me. I chose y'all. And one of you was the devil. That's the, see, that's the, that's the problem with choosing, trying to choose who Christians are. You know, you're a Christian, you're not. You say, you're not say, you say, you're not say. You don't need to choose, just let them be. You just be. And it's going to come out. You just be who you say you are. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We're standing. That's it. That's it. Woo! God, good God. I don't know. I, I, it's, just, it's just, the word of God just, is just amazing to me. Because as I, as I began thinking about that, that word, and I began to think about what we've talked about in the last couple of, um, couple of weeks, and we talked about the, talked about the feeding of the 5,000, and, 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 and we saw it as compassion, but even then Jesus was teaching us because he's saying it. He wants, he wants us to know that anyone who comes to him, right, there will always be enough of him to consume. You know, the, there's enough of Jesus for anybody that wants to come. Everybody wants to come. He was like, you know, the 5,000, we got, we got five, you know, two fish, five loaves of bread. It doesn't matter. Everyone will eat. God said, for God so loved the world that whosoever can eat. You can come to him and you can eat his flesh and drink his blood. Doesn't matter how many, he would never run out. His example is there for everybody. We have to make sure, look, everything that we have, remember. Just, just, just remember. If you don't remember anything else, understand that what you have within you through the power of the Holy Spirit is so valuable. And again, that compassion that comes out of goodness, it's so valuable. It is so valuable. The world wants it, can't have it, and you have it. And it comes out of you to be compassionate to your brother, to be compassionate to your sister. And, 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 and they desire it, but they desire the things that come with it. Don't let them just get what they want. Give them what they need. Because you are the blessed, because you are the ones that, that hallelujah, that are blessed through, through your choice for Jesus Christ, people will come to you. You use it as an opportunity to do your job, to teach them, hallelujah, to teach them about Jesus, to talk to them. Don't let them manipulate the situation. They want to come to you asking for something. They want to smoke. They want to, no, nah, uh, you leave that. Uh, uh, no, not, uh, nah, uh, not in my presence because of who I serve. Now, you, you're trying to get something from me. You need to respect me and who I serve. You have, you, they're coming because you have the hook. You, you, you reeling them in. They see you. They, they, they know you're going to be compassionate. Oh, yeah, you think you, you think you manipulate me, but huh, come on. I'm reeling you in. And they think they're reeling you in. But you have to understand what you have for them 
through Jesus is better than what you can give them physically.